Manish uh, P. Kiri is Managing Director at uh, Kiri Industries. He is joining us on a phone line from Ahmedabad. Uh, now, you know, th this is one of those dream situations. Kiri, Indus Kiri Industries, uh, the stock has basically doubled in the last uh, six or seven days. To be precise about including today's 10% gain, 90% plus in the last six trading sessions. 90%. I mean, I, I, one would think that these kind of uh, opportunities or situations don't exist, cannot exist, but well, that's what's happened. So let me ask uh, you, Mr. Kiri, good, good morning, Prashant here. What has changed so dramatically? Mr. Kiri, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Right. I was asking what has changed so dramatically for your business because the stock price has doubled in the last... Uh, Six, seven days. I think there are multiple factors which are somehow, you know, coincidentally happening at the same time. Um, one was our uh, major change is the, is the reduction of the debt. And there is a huge reduction, less than half uh, a debt which has remained now compared to what used to be earlier. So debt reduction is one major point. Second is, you know, there is, a, there is a crackdown on the certain companies in China which got one major producer uh, got closed and which also happened about 15, 20 days ago. And, and because of that, the, the shortages of uh, products got created and prices of some of our products increased sharply. Um, these are the two, two factors which seem to be uh, uh, you know, uh, the reasons uh, for, the, for the rally of our stock, that's what it appears. And the third factor which I can see now is that, you know, Kiri owns 37.55% of Diestar, which is world's largest uh, uh, color company. And I think people are realizing that that profitable company, which we are uh, consolidating as an associate uh, uh, company in our in our. Uh, financial statements is not being reflected. So I think these are the three factors which I can see uh, is, is, is responsible for the movement. So you said you own 35, 36% in uh, which company? 37.55% of Diestar, which is world's largest color company. And, and that is also one of the reasons. So I think these three reasons are, are the main reasons. Uh huh. Uh, the, uh, right. Okay. You uh, so Kiri Kiri owns uh, thirty six uh, almost thirty six percent in Dice Star. You saying right? Thirty seven point fifty five to be precise. Yes, that is why. Thirty seven, almost thirty eight percent then. Almost thirty eight percent, and that company is having a top line of close to nine hundred million, and bottom line of about hundred million profit after tax U.S. dollar. So so that. So 38 percent of that that we have been actually consolidating for last one year. In fact, every quarter we have we have those numbers. But somehow, I think people have realized now, as things have come to limelight, that that is a valuable uh, you know investment that Kiri is is carrying, and that is also helping our bottom line significantly. Uh, so what is Kiri's own profit? I mean, uh, if you can talk last year, uh, full year? I mean, the full year which we are going to, uh, I mean, have auditor results come out soon, we crossed about a thousand crore and, and at a beta level, we were close to 160 crore. No, this is the number that you are going to report for the full year now. Which might be, you know, in that range. This one's not completed, yes. You're, you're saying uh, EBITDA would have crossed 160 crores? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, fair enough. I mean, so, uh, your share of Diestar's profit far exceeds uh, the money that you make at Kiri, right? Yes, yes. That's true. Yes, yes. Absolutely true. And, and that's... that's close to 100 million profit after tax uh, as a company's uh, uh, you know bottom line so which is close to 700 670 crore and 38 percent of it is also around 232 40 crores correct right 
When did you acquire this stake in Daistar? Um, it was acquired in beginning of 2010. And uh, uh, the, it became profitable by end of 2013. So 2013, 14 and 15, these three years are the uh, consistent profitable years for that company. When you acquired it, the company was not profit making. I mean, it was, did you no, buy it at a... Yeah, we bought it from bankruptcy along with the Chinese partner. So it was loss making in 2010, 11, 12, three years, uh, it was loss making and went through restructuring. Uh, it was successfully restructured 2013, started making money and three years in a row, then it, it made a decent, decent profit. And now, uh, I mean, I guess markets have started kind of sort of realizing that, right? I mean, and factoring yeah, it market, in. Yeah, I think mar market has started factoring because market saw the consistency for three years. So I think maybe that is the reason that uh, that we can also think of. One of you said it's the world's largest color company. I mean, what exactly uh, does it do? I mean, which industries does it cater to? And uh, are they in the same business as you are? Yeah, the, the, the dyes and, and the colors. So it serves whatever can be colored. So, uh, you know, textile, leather, paper, pigments, a lot of uh, uh, coloring materials that, that is being sold. Uh -huh. and, and, and you do, you do the same thing as well? Uh, we we do the same thing as well, and we we Daisa does for the whole lot of uh, product ranges. While we do for a small segment, which is uh, which is for the uh, you know a specific range of colors to be to be in a plain terms. Yeah, and Kiri uh, also is, has a has a major business of intermediates, and today uh, you know because of the Chinese plant closer. Uh, and it was a big plant, almost 30% of world's requirement was coming from that plant. So intermediate prices and Kiri's profitability is basically driven from the intermediates, which are the raw materials for dye stuff. And those intermediate prices have skyrocketed. I mean, two times or three times some of the intermediates have increased. And, and the major reasons for Kiri's profitability is also dyes intermediates rather than dyes. So uh, Chinese uh, uh, have gone very heavily on the polluting units in China. They have closed down several units, including one major one. And, and it, it would take, you know, some time for them to recover and to build certain facilities to reach their compliance levels. So many Indian dye intermediate companies are having, uh, I would say, a good time for at least next three, four months. If that is what it appears. And that is that has been helping to our profitability also. Uh, what what exactly are these intermediates? I mean, could you explain it simply? I mean, uh, intermediates to make dyes and colors, is it? Yes, yeah. These are the raw materials to make colors, and two major of them are H acid and H sulfon. These two are the major intermediates, which are the raw materials to make colors. The, sorry, what are the intermediates? You said two, I missed that. What what were the two? And they are uh, derivatives of oil, sir. The, they call it H acid and they call it vinyl sulfone. These are the synthetic organic components, you know, uh, which are called the dye intermediates. And H acid is a naphthalene compound, while vinyl sulfone is an aniline based compound. So basically, naphthalene and aniline based, uh, in a simple terms, uh, 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 organic compounds which are used for making colors. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. uh, and, and you do interme intermediates is also a big business for you. So yeah, you, you're in the same market as a Chinese company which got shut down. Yes, yes. Intermediates is in fact for Kiri a major portion of the business compared to dyes. Dyes is in you know, an overall uh, total uh, contribution. Intermediates is, is, is higher portion. So that is helping in today's time. Yeah. Uh, what is the split, sir, between intermediates and uh, dyes for Kiri? Uh, right now, it's about 70-30. 70, 30. 70, 70 intermediates, 30 dyes, right? Right, correct. That's right. Uh -huh. And, and, dyes, and as intermediates? You know, dyes, as you know, dyes, dyes intermediates also are a part of specialty chemicals. So, in, in various areas of the specialty chemicals, dyes and dyes intermediates is one of the categories of specialty chemicals.
These intermediates are used to make dyes, right? I mean, final, the final product. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Okay. So, is, is Dye Star listed? Uh, I mean, where is the company based out of? The US? Is it listed? Uh, no, not listed. The, the head office is in Singapore. Singapore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I you know, appreciate your time, sir. Just one quick quick question. In financial year 17, could you give us some estimate of what uh, what operating earnings will look like? Say, I mean, if you end this year at 160 crores, what would operating earnings, uh, earnings in 17 look like? I think, I think assuming, see, the one major assumption is that we would have, uh, you know, uh, these margins continue for at least first quarter or partial second quarter. Then we are looking at top line of close to 1,300 crore with 20% with uh, beta that we might able, be able to target for the full year. Sorry, you said uh, revenues could exceed uh, how much in 17? 1, 1,300. 1,300 crore. And, uh, and, and uh, th this is from 16, you said what about you, you'd cross 1,000 in 16? Yeah, so we are expecting 30% rise in that, um, mainly mainly with a factor of price increase, not not with a factor of quantity increase, but with a factor of price increase. We can have 30% increase in the top line, and our beta could reach around 20%, could be our target. That is what we will strive to achieve in this year. The beta margin? Yes, that's why. So that could be about uh, 250, 260 crores as well? That's what the target is, correct. Okay, Mr. Kiri, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining us with that uh, perspective uh, and uh, good speaking with you, sir. Thank you indeed.